in 2008, Apple acquired a small fabless power PC chip design company called PA Semi for $278 million. Two years later, they debuted their first in-house design system on a chip, the A4, in the Apple iPad. The system on a chip basically puts almost all the functions of a computer on a single piece of silicone to improve performance and reduce power consumption. This is really important for compact phones which have limited amounts of space and power. Since then, the sophistication of the A4 series chip has skyrocketed, making Apple chips the fastest in the market. The A7 chip in the iPhone 5S in particular went 64-bit way ahead of the competition, catching competing companies like Qualcomm off guard. Four years later, the A11 in iPhone 8 produced Geekbench scores that aren't on par with laptop processors. These are really amazing chips that Apple does not make. You see, they only design the chip, but they do not manufacture. That rough work is outsourced to another company, and that company is the biggest semiconductor company in Taiwan, even in the world, too. Yet few have ever heard of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. So what does this TSMC do? And how did Apple change TSMC? TSMC started its journey in 1987 with the partnership of Taiwan, Philips, and Morris Chang, the founder and ex-CEO of TSMC. But when the company was founded, there were already some legacy players like Intel, Texas Instruments, and NEC dominating the market. So to build their position in the market, TSMC took years to develop and manufacture advanced semiconductors as brand value doesn't matter in this industry. Though the first chips TSMC produced were two process nodes, which was two generations behind from the market, Morris somehow managed to attract the customers by low cost. In other words, Morris sold the first chips of TSMC at a loss. But it was necessary to fill the gap, so in four to five years, TSMC was able to reduce the gap between one node processor. That same year, in 1993, Morris also took TSMC shares public through Taiwan Stock Exchange. And after four years, TSMC was the first Taiwanese company that listed in a New York stock. With that public share and dot-com bubble, Morris was able to conduct the most aggressive strategy in the 1990s. This resulted the company introducing the world's first 0.18 micron low-power process technology in 1998 and continued to roll out new low-power processors every two years. This aggressive R&D and introduction of new advanced processors eventually led to TSMC as industry leader. As the mission was accomplished, Morris, at age 70, handed over the position of CEO to Rick Tsai in 2005. Under Rick's leadership, TSMC continued its rapid innovation of chips, and between 2006 to 2008, the company took its biggest jump of innovation from 65 nanometer chips to 40 nanometer ones. Despite the company progressing fast, they were not able to do much business due to experiencing a massive recession in the chip industry with the dot-com bubble. But when this recession rolled out, Morris saw a big opportunity for the semiconductor industry through the emergence of mobile technology like smartphones and tablets. In short, his next big customer, Apple. So he held back the TSMC ship sale at age of 78 in 2009 and worked on cracking a deal with Steve Jobs. However, the dream became true in 2011 when Apple agreed to run a trial production of A5 and A6 with TSMC. After that, it didn't take long for TSMC to become a long-term supplier of Apple, and along with that, TSMC also got some big-shot deals including AMD, ARM, Broadcom, Marvell, MediaTek, and NVIDIA. Now, if we take a look at the whole chip industry market, TSMC alone is holding a share of over 52% in the global market in 2021, according to Statista. However, among these big industry players, Apple was always a big prime customer for TSMC. And the other companies working with TSMC mostly work on inventories where Apple sells finished products at a flagship price. It was a great opportunity for TSMC to make a good amount of money. 
Though NVIDIA is also shipping their flagship A100 Compute GPU for data centers and high-performance computers from TSMC, that's only in a limited number. Even once the second biggest customer of TSMC, Huawei has also ended the business due to US-China issues. So TSMC's ultimate target was to satisfy Apple, and to match the pace of Apple introducing new iPhones and MacBooks every year has initiated TSMC to refuel their R&D strategy. After the trial production of A5 and A6, Apple agreed to continue their business with TSMC for their further production. And in September 2014, Apple first fabbed their customer with the TSMC-produced 20 nanometer processor. But that was not enough for Apple to rely fully on a sole supplier, so news came out that Apple was looking for a second supplier. Even for iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, Apple dual-sourced the A9 chips from both TSMC and Samsung. But a brouhaha arose by the media alleging Samsung chips for worsening battery life. Along with that, the patent war that started between Samsung and Apple in 2011 for design and utilities was also a big reason for Apple to end their partnership with Samsung. After all, doing business with a rival company is not a wise thing to do. Where else, TSMC never goes on competition with their customers and maintains these core values strictly. Therefore, Apple feels TSMC was more trustable for doing business with them. Apple decided to single-source chips from TSMC in 2016, which means TSMC has to introduce new and better chips every year to fulfill Apple's new iPhone demands. And that cost a bit hard for TSMC. Morris invested $9 billion and 6,000 people on work to build a new fab for Apple. Thus, it was a big commitment, and only a few companies that time could invest so much in their business. However, that huge investment didn't go to waste, and after starting business with Apple, TSMC revenue grew twice from its previous five year. With that now, Apple is contributing 26% of TSMC revenue, which is approximately $14.27 billion. Along with growing the business, Apple also was the reason for TSMC to introduce new and most innovative chip wafers every year. If we see the previous graphs of TSMC chips, we can see a big gap between the innovations of new chips. But for Apple, strategy has to be changed, so Morris gets along with a half-step strategy. This was a step ahead from the American giant Intel that was using a TikTok strategy for years and brought new chipsets roughly between 18 months and two years. While with half-step strategy, TSMC decided to improve their chip performance 10 to 20% every year. For example, if you differentiate the latest iPhone 13 Pro's A15 Bionic chip with the A14 one, you won't see big mesmerizing innovation. Yet you can see a faster and power-efficient performance from the previous model while both are manufactured with 5 nanometer chips. Even the term nanometer is just used for marketing, and there is no size difference between a 14 nanometer and a 7 nanometer chip. In short, it is just a wise decision of Morris to take little steps in spite of unnecessary high-risk jumps. So the company is still able to pull out new and improved chip nodes every year and fulfill the demand of its most important customer, Apple. This eventually cleared the fact that behind TSMC Big Shot's success and innovative chipset, Apple has a deep influence. Also, working with a tech giant has increased the growth rate and potentiality of this Taiwanese company. It is now the world's largest semiconductor foundry. And as a remark of the influence, TSMC is soon going to show its new charm with the 3 nanometer chips starting production in the later half of 2022. The Digitimes Asia reports states that the company is planning to manufacture a set of 30,000 to 35,000 wafers using the 3NM chip. And possibly the iPads are going to be the first products that will be introduced with this N3 according to WCCF Tech. Doesn't matter what the product Apple is putting the new chipset in, but this is going to be a game changer for the world and TSMC too.